Hello World is the name of the first program that almost every programmer writes. Let's check out this program and say hello to the world of programming. In the video on command line interfaces, we looked at three CLIs. Now we will use these CLIs to write the Hello World program three times, once for each CLI using the code available behind the scenes. In the computer programming video, we saw that code and data are the two things that exist inside every computer program. Indeed. Your evidence? We can't prove for every by showing an example, but we will see some evidence of this in action. The CLIs we worked with before all have their own associated programming languages under the hood that we can use to write programs. Let's look at the programs first and then we'll write them. We have Hello World in PowerShell, in JavaScript, and in the Linux terminal. For each of these programs, I've highlighted the code in black and the data in red. Keep this example of data in mind because very soon in the playlist, our focus will be on data just like this. One thing I know you may be wondering is what on earth do these programs do? In the video on CLIs, we saw that when we ran the Notepad program, it launched Notepad. When we run these programs, they're gonna display the text Hello World to us inside the console. Before we see this in action, let me show you something important about this code. The code in each of these programs consists of either a single verb or a verb and a noun. These types of verb-noun combinations are typical with code. They allow us to read code and figure out what the code does. Verbs tell us what action the code will take and nouns give us more context around that particular action. With console.log, the verb log tells us that the action is to log a message and the noun console tells us where the message will be logged. Keep this verb noun idea in mind, it's gonna pop up a lot in programming. And we'll talk about this concept more when we start to look at code more closely. So let's start out with PowerShell. We'll just type write host. Remember, we can hit the tab to find things that are available. At this point, I've typed write dash ho and I'm gonna just hit the tab and then boom, we have write host showing up for us because PowerShell knows that's available. And now we just need to go ahead and type the text hello world inside of quotes. The last thing we need to do is add a semicolon at the end. We typically write code line by line and we use semicolons to indicate that the line has terminated or finished. Here we have it, we have a one line program, we're ready to run it. Now to run it, we just press enter. When we do that, this code will execute. So let's do it. We get back the text, hello world. At first glance, this might seem kind of pointless, but hang with me. We're here in the JavaScript console and let's just knock this out. We'll go ahead and type console.log and then see we're getting a suggestion log. So all I've typed is LO and the JavaScript console is suggesting, hey, I see that log is here, is that what you want? So if I hit tab, then it completes it. That's called autocomplete. In JavaScript, we have these things here. These are parentheses and let's just put hello world in there and then we are ready to run this piece of code so the way we do that is we click enter and then we see the text comes right back to us okay we're here in the linux terminal let's go ahead and type out echo and then the text hello world now same thing here press enter and echoed right back to us we see the text hello world I want to address something now that you may be thinking. Looking at this, it seems kind of wacky and not really beneficial. Why would you really want to do this? Before I tell you, let me show you the first assignment that I have in my first programming class. Jump over to PowerShell to do this. The assignment was like this. It said, write a program that adds the numbers three and seven. And I thought to myself, what on earth does that mean? Write a program that adds the numbers three and seven and it was really confusing. I didn't even know what to do, but it turns out that all the assignment wanted me to do was this, three plus seven. That's the program. And when we press enter, we get 10. So programs start out very basic and then you build up from there. Can we segue now into something more pressing? Okay, just like a program that adds three and seven, the Hello World program is easy, but there is an important idea that the program illustrates. The Hello World program shows us how we can communicate with the outside world from inside our programs using code. 
Machines in the physical world augment human muscle or our strength, and programming augments our minds or our thinking. Imagine you see your friend and you can tell that they're in deep thought, but you have no idea what's going through their head. Something you might say is, hey, talk to me, give me something here, tell me what you're thinking. And that's kind of what this is about. So if we want our programs to tell us what they're thinking, then we're gonna have to put these types of lines in, in there, that way they can communicate out to us where they are in their execution. In this particular case, we're in an interactive shell, so there's no need for the code to communicate out to us what's happening, because we can see the code. We're interacting with the code and data directly. But in the next video, we're gonna take this command and save it in its own file. And then at that point, you'll see that we don't know exactly what the code is doing. It'll show the need for programs that talk to us or that tell us what they're doing in the same way that the Hello World program says hello. Goodbye.